Welcome back friends. Welcome back to um, this next build, passive solar greenhouse build video. Specifically in this video we're looking at soil and we need to turn this barren uh, landscape <clears throat> into something that is full of biology, full of goodness, full of um, organic material. <clears throat> at the moment we've just got the native soil um, and you can see it's very very sandy loam, it's very dry. Um, to be honest, just putting a load of water on this will really help, but we need to do more than that. And as I mentioned in my um, eight kind of concepts of a great passive solar greenhouse, um, one, of the one, one of the things that's really overlooked is the quality of the soil, and we need to do something with this soil to turn it around. First thing we need to do, is go through, remove any building objects that are left. Uh, most of it's gone, but there are there are stones that we dug up. There are um, bits of wood. Then we need to go through and dig, fork over the soil. Well, mark out the beds. Roughly know where they're going to go. Um, fork it over, and put in. Um, start putting in our substrates to build up the quality of the soil with um, things like compost, chicken manure compost, our own. Um, biochar that's been activated and things like that. So uh, most of it will be time lapse and I'll talk through what's going on and uh, hopefully by the end of it we'll have some really nice beds because we have got a lot of plants ready to go in to that's the other greenhouse. Um, as you can see we've got a lot of stuff just waiting in the aisles ready to be planted in so I really need to get going. Um, to get this greenhouse ready. I'm not feeling the greatest myself either. Anyway, um, let's get straight into it and clear up and start forking over this soil. Okay, so I know up to now uh, all these build videos have been more about building and engineering and tech and stuff like that. But um, we're going to talk about soil um, and I've already said that this is a really important part of this project because ultimately what is the point in building a greenhouse whether it's a simple cheap poly or something a bit more elaborate like this um, passive solar what is the point in building that if you're not going to grow nice nutritious food in it and to do that you need good soil so that's why i'm making this video um so um here i am i've been digging out the beds and um i've now putting some i realize that if i'm going to make the effort of forking it over um then i might as well put the biochar down straight away now i am a big proponent of no dig um, and everything i try to do is no dig but in this circumstance i really felt um, to get a good start we needed to, to fork it over um to allow more of the moisture to go down which you'll see in a minute i, I water the bed thoroughly um, and I don't really see the problem if you're going to do it once and then leave it. And we have suffered with a lot of dry weather or lack of rain. Bear in mind, um, when this video was made, the roof had only gone on the week before. So there's plenty of opportunity for, if it rained, for the soil to get wet. And you can see from here how dry it really is, how difficult it is for me to get the fork in um, and break it up. Um, and his precipitation chart basically pretty much nothing and that what fell in early April was actually snow which we can't do anything with um, so it moved straight from snow to pretty much nothing there was enough to fill our tanks half I think and then nothing no more um, and that, as of making this video we still have received no more um, rain at all so um, we need to find water from somewhere else, but that's a different topic for a different video. So I'm um, going to start. This is how I activate the biochar. I've got this three tanks of my um, fermented um, nettle juice, lovely stuff full of biology, and I pour that over the charcoal with some water. Um, ideally, you would leave it a bit longer and um, uh, blah, blah blah but I didn't really have the time and I needed to get it going so I did what I did uh, and then raked it all in so that's our first layer and then um, uh, as I said I gave the beds a really good soaking 
um, to really get some moisture in because you know what we're going to be doing is building these beds above this the soil is kind of the base layer really what we're going to be the roots will stretch down into the soil but we need to build biology and organic matter on top of this so it's good to start with lots of moisture so again i'm going to um, do another layer with my um, fermented nettle juice um, i wouldn't normally do it this strong you know it needs to be about 20 to 1 really but this is a little bit stronger than that it's fine it's the, it's gonna say it's the base layer and then the first thing we do is i've got these crates of organic matter which is scraped off from the old greenhouse it basically leaves there is some charcoal in here as well but lots of organic matter and charcoal so we'll put that on as the next layer and i got four of these i think this is actually old compost as well which we planted um, some potatoes in but it's it's a mixture of old compost leaves and charcoal Next of all, we go over to the um, leaf mold compost, which I've been making. This is nearly two years old. Um, certainly it's last year's leaves, so maybe not two, well, a year and a half, something like that. Um, so that'll be the next layer. It's good to mix things which are um, both rich in, um, bacteria and rich in uh, mycelium and fungus and this is a leaf mold compost is more on the fungal side so that's why we add that to blend it well Now um, this is what I'm revealing here is what we scraped off the chicken from the chicken enclosure. It's the first year of um, basically chicken, you know, um, good uh, composted chicken compost really from the chicken run. And that was probably based <coughs> on lots of leaves and I think it was wood chip compost as well. So um, that'll be the next layer. This is really about getting fertility down there um, lots of fertility in this from the decomposed chicken manure I mean there is a risk of um, that there were a few ants in this I think um, there's a risk of it you know inviting ants in but um, and there's also a risk of lots of sea you know, weed seeds and stuff like that but we um, I'm willing to accept that risk in exchange for the fertility that it gives. So more water. And then um, we move to perhaps a bit more, a few couple of commercial layers. So we had this big bag of um, potting mix, which is peat based. Um, and then we've got these bags, which are 50, 50 um, compost and peat. I mean, <clears throat> Latvia is a massive producer of peat compost. I know it's getting bad press and it's really difficult for us to find alternatives to peat so i was really pleased to find this 50 50 mix um it's nice and dark i'm really pleased with that i've used it in the other greenhouse as well um, now it's time um i'm doing other things at the same time but um i need to we need to start planting the stuff in so i work out where all the plants are going to go um it's good to get the plants in and settled and then i can continue working on the other bits uh, mostly the tech and automation but um and I'm measuring it out the, the correct spacing. And uh, Gita will come in here and actually plant them. Um, that's her speciality, really. But she wanted me to let her know where I wanted things. So you can see the dust coming off the soil. A bit murky in this video. I think it was... Um, Either the lens is a bit foggy or it is actually quite humid. Mm. 
in a moment at the end once these are planted um, I'll show you what it looks like now um, which is about two or three weeks after this was filmed um, so um, the kind of one of the last tasks is to I wanted to put some edges in just to give it a bit of trim just to keep that compost in really um, and then we can also do an infill in the path here um, we've got a, an idea um, for later on but I might do some wood chips but anyway just just to keep things um, neat and tidy um, if you've seen uh, I've already done the other greenhouse with a very similar system um, I'll link to the video here so you, you can uh, you can see that and these are spaced out a meter each um, for the pegs which are holding the this this last plank was actually twisted it was a right pain to get it um, in but we got there in the end good okay so um, it's all finished now um, earlier in the video I made a big deal about it not raining and it hasn't rained <clears throat> and it's just started to rain. There's nothing forecasted today. I mean, how you can't make this up. This is typical. I came out to film the last bit and it started to rain, but I don't think it's going to last very long. It's going to be a few spots and that's it. So um, everything's out. <clears throat> it's been growing now for a couple of weeks. Um, the beds um, are finished. The, the bed stops um, containers. Obviously this side is where some kind of heat mass will go later on um, and the insulation still needs to come in. But essentially it's a working greenhouse now um, because of the temperature drop, the windows close. <clears throat> and things are growing nicely. We're seeing some nice colour on the leaves. If you look at the paler, the lower leaves, which were the growing um, indoors and now they're outside and this is grown it's really nice dark green color so they're taking up all those nutrients um that are in the bed yeah so things are looking good tomatoes paprikas um chilies got some experimental sweet potatoes here and some melons um, and cucumbers and you can see we've started to string it up now. Just a few more to string up and then it's all done. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video um, and found it of some use. If you did, there's lots of other videos on the YouTube which I think will be equally useful. So do check them out. Thanks for watching um, this video and continue to journey with us on this series about building a passive solar greenhouse. Obviously still a few more videos to come. Um, and uh, I think the next one we'll look at the automation side of things. So uh, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in another video very soon. Bye for now.